The animals, the animals Trap, trap, trap till the cages fall The cages fall, the day is new And everyone is waiting, waiting on you And you Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because orange may be the new black, but it's all CPU to us, baby! My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For at Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, hopes you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays, and as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are still being published once per week in many seasons. Kind of like The Walking Dead. So subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and via Google Play to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows including, but not limited to, Doctor Who, Downton Abbey, How to Get Away with Murder, Broadchurch, Marvel's Daredevil and Jessica Jones, Once Upon a Time, New Girl, The Vampire Diaries, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Gotham, Supernatural, Game of Thrones and the X-Files from its inception through its revival. We've taken a look back at True Blood, Ally McBeal, Futurama, Desperate Housewives, and Six Feet Under, and more episodes are in the works, including new entries in our ongoing American Horror Story series, our Marvel's Defender series, which will be covering Luke Cage, plus our DC Television Universe panel will shortly be covering the first seasons of Legends of Tomorrow and of Supergirl. What's more, CPU has gone and will continue to go live. On August 8th, CPU joined forces with Grand Rapids, Michigan-based troupe No Outlet Improv for Comedy Outlet Mondays and was live at Dog Story Theater and streaming live on Facebook to talk Noit's top five TV comedy inspirations. On September 26th, we attended Com Again to discuss Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt Season 2. On October 22nd, we will be live at Grand Rapids Comic Con at DeVos Place in Grand Rapids, during which our DCTU and Marvel's Defenders panels will be talking the top five DC and Marvel live-action heroes and villains, which will also be live-streamed to our Facebook page. It should be spicier than Red's cooking, so make sure you like us at our Facebook page, our Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, and or our Pinterest at CPU Podcast, or subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, our Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Play. In the meantime, if you don't hear your show in this podcast format, fellow panelists and I still write reviews, and we're always seeking new panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello by finding us at any one of those outlets aforementioned. At the very least, stop by and leave us a thumbs up, comment, or review. We like feedback. Just keep it clean, people. Keep it clean. Today, we're around the water cooler and discussing Season 4 of Orange is the New Black, which was released in its entirety to the Netflix streaming library on June 17, 2016, with a total of 13 episodes, which means, for the record, that the show is legally available to Netflix subscribers exclusively as it is Netflix-produced original content. As you might recall, Orange is the New Black is a comedy drama about a Manhattan woman whose past catches up to her and for which she must serve time in federal prison. The show is set in New York, though flashbacks for each of the prisoners who comprise the cast of characters sometimes venture away from New York. Taylor Schilling plays Piper Chapman, who after becoming engaged to be married to a man, learns that she must serve a short sentence in federal prison. She's been implicated in the bust of an international drug cartel, of which former girlfriend Alex Foz, played by Laura Prepon of That 70s Show, was a member, and who Piper aided and abetted in the throes of young love. At first, Piper finds that she's wholly unequipped for prison, though some, like unabashed self-proclaimed lesbian junkie Nikki Nichols, played by Natasha Lyon, are kind and helpful to her. Others, like Red, played by Kate Mulgrew, show her no mercy. At least until Red and our other characters warm up to Piper, which for some is quite the adjustment. 
In addition, the guards can be drunk on their own power, the prison counselors play favorites and are easily offended, and the prison population is divided by race unofficially but automatically. If all that weren't complicated enough, Alex is sent to the same prison, and Piper's emotions are deeply conflicted as she reasons that only Alex could have pointed the finger to get her in trouble in the first place. For a more detailed plot summary, listen to the prior podcast we have about Orange is the New Black, or check out other OITNB entries on the blog. If you didn't already know, you can click the floating box at the top right of the header, the picture with the TV watcher, and search for any blog entry or prior podcast episode, which is a handy thing. For now, our illustrious group of OITNB panelists, namely Krista, Kristen, Nick, and Amanda, have returned along with one new but familiarly voiced panelist who wanted to join in on the discussion to discuss the new season and to speculate on what the next season might look like as, of course, Netflix has renewed this wildly successful program for a fifth season likely to be released in June 2017. Before we get into the discussion, I want to take a moment to take the panel's temperature. After all, as we all know, sometimes a TV show can take turns for the better or the worse in our heads or can continue its level of awesomeness or lack thereof depending upon its story evolution we're also going to introduce our new panelists but before i do as always it should be noted that every single one of our panelists have viewed the entire show through the end of the fourth season and will likely discuss sensitive plot points so for those of you who are not caught up on orange is the new black listen at your own risk as there may be major spoilers welcome back orange is the new black panel how are you all today Hi, guys. <laughs> Good, and you're all talking together. <laughs> well, welcome back. I'm going to, as I said in the introduction, take a minute to take the returning panelist temperatures, and we're going to do that by me asking this standard CPU character question, though that question changes with each show we do, and it's also changed from season to season for our Orange is the New Black. You'll be happy to know, listener, and panelists that it is slightly smaller than last year (laughs) even though we had so many more new characters this time but the characters that we are following that have been consistent have had quite a few big changes from seasons three to four so what i'd like to do is ask you how are you interested in orange is the new black nowadays after having watched season four are you addicted like nikki have you found new tentative love for it, though you feel it is struggling to make sense of its identity, like so-so? Do you like it and have started watching it because it's become big and famous and has some great kitchen and craft techniques, although you also realize that it wasn't everything it was cracked up to be, like Pousset? Are you watching it because your friends watch it, and friends make the insufferable tolerable? Also, friends remind you of who you are, like Big Boo, Pensatucky, Janae, Black Cindy, Gloria Maritza Flacca, Red's family, Nora and Gia, and so on and so on and so forth. Do you watch it because your boss watches it and you want to be the best assistant you can be, like Tasty? Are you watching it for business reasons and because you're looking to make yourself a baller and to stake your territory as the number one gang in this overcrowded prison, like Maria, Blanca, and the rest of the Dominicans? Are you watching it because your family watches it, like Aleda or Daya? Do you want it to be badass gangsta, but you realize that it falls short and or that it makes poor choices? In fact, continuing to watch this show is tantamount to a poor choice for you, like Piper. Do you feel guilty for watching it and or for killing the man that was out to get you, like Alex? Are you watching it but are embarrassed about doing so because it flies in the face of your sense of self, like Yoga Jones? Are you disinterested because you feel like nothing you do matters or helps, despite the life experiences you've had to endure and you're losing the fight, like Healy, or sacrificing your own health and welfare to keep fighting, like Red? Are you disinterested but looking to cause trouble, like the white supremacy prisoners because they're not nice? Are you disinterested, period? (laughs) Are you disinterested, period, but what the hell? You like trying new things, and you're trying to turn over a new leaf, like Piper's Hawaiian roommate that I don't know her name. Are you just crazy but trying your best, often unsuccessfully, to stay out of trouble, like Suzanne, a.k.a. Crazy Eyes, Morello, or Lolly? Or you don't watch it anymore because you were unjustifiably sent to solitary, like Sophia or Sister. Who would like to start? Hi, Kristen. Again, I think last time and for the past couple of seasons, I've said that I'm addicted like Mickey. While that is still true, I think I've jumped down just a little bit, and I'm going to say that I'm like so-so 
this season. I I kind of have a tentative love for it. I I like where it was going in season four. I really thought season four was great, but I'm very curious as to how they're going to keep it going because it's so popular. So now I'm kind of getting to that point of how are they going to keep it moving. So do you feel it's struggling to make sense of its identity? I feel like season five may be a little bit of a struggle because of the big event that happened at the second to last episode of this past season. Fair enough. We'll get to that. Welcome back, Kristen. Thank you. This is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. I am substituting my reality for yours. (laughs) Thank you. People you listed as crazy. (laughs) I'm only going by nicknames. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) However, with the theme of mental health of this series season i'm going to have to say that i am i kind of have my own drummer for this one i just still enjoy the show i don't always love every choice that they make but like some of those characters i am hopelessly devoted okay (laughs) fair enough welcome back amanda i'm nick and i i think i've said i've addicted like nikki the last couple of seasons i I don't know you've really tried hard to be red the last I mean, you don't have to be her anymore, but I don't, I don't know that you've been Nikki before. Okay, good. <laughs> or, I'm indifferent. <laughs> I'm addicted like Nikki because of the ending. Like, I really want to see where they go with it, but okay. that's not doesn't really represent my feeling of the season as a whole. I think it started out a little slow and got better and better, but I think I ended the season more like Nikki because of what I want to see coming up. Fair enough. Welcome back, Nick. Thanks. I guess. (laughs) I. That's part of our rapport. This is is Krista. Hi, Krista. And I, similarly to Nick, like I, it ended for me in a lot better place than it started. Only about halfway through the season did I really start even finding a reason to keep watching the next episode. (laughs) So I think I'm probably kind of like so-so and Pousse, like in that... You found new love for it, even though it's struggling for its identity. I did find love for it, but it's not at all it's cracked up to be. Oh, okay. Fair enough. (laughs) Welcome back, Krista. Uh Thanks for complying to the descriptions. (laughs) I I did. I I didn't read. (laughs) (laughs) Well, before I talk about where I am, we have a brand new panelist. Not brand new to CPU, but brand new to the Orange is the New Black panel. So, new panelists, what I'd like you to do before you pick from the list is to tell us who you are by your first name, why you started watching Orange is the New Black, what made you start watching, why you kept watching, the usual first question, and then pick a character. I am Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Andrew. I, I started watching, I know I'm going to botch this name because I feel like it's pronounced different than I think, but Genji. That's right. That is correct? Yeah. I still like I heard Mary Louise Parker say it differently on some interview. Anyway, <laughs> I heard her talking about the show before it started. And I was like, I love her. I loved Weeds. I should watch that. Completely forgot about it. It came on Netflix. I watched the first episode. Eh. Didn't really watch it again for a couple days until my sister was like, you have to watch it. It's so good. And then I watched it and I binged the entire first season. And I've stuck with it because I love the show. I love getting to know the characters. I There are times I don't like where the show goes, but I feel like it always does find its footing if it goes off. Yeah, I would say overall, I'm Nikki. I'm okay. addicted to the show. Overall, it's, it's, it's kind of a chore to watch the show just because it's so intense. And so with this season, I wasn't ready to start. I'm so behind on shows to binge, and so I haven't. Because I was like, that show is going to take... A lot of work, you know, and I wasn't ready to go back to the prison. But, <laughs> so I'm a little, also I say, watch it because, uh, for business reasons, because I was forced to watch it <laughs> to do this podcast. <laughs> and that's just why. I stopped the Americans and oh, this is Brain Dead <laughs> to go back to Orange is the New Black. But yeah, overall, I'm addicted, and even if I start to lose my interest in the show, it always comes back and grabs me. Okay. Well, welcome to the panel, Andrew. Thanks for having me. 
thanks for being here. We're happy to have you. As for me, oh, oh, I don't even remember what I've said in the past. I probably would still be addicted like Nikki. I still want to know what happens. I'm devastated after the ending of this season, and we'll talk about why, but it did involve one of the losses of, or the loss of one of my favorite characters, which is a struggle for me. And so I'm kind of more at the precipice of, okay, I'm going to keep watching because like Nick, I want to see how they handle it, but... She was one of the more compelling characters, <laughs> so now I'm just like, where I'm going to have to find something for it. So I'm probably between Soso and Nikki myself, actually, but I haven't really found the new tentative love for it. I'm just kind of watching it because it's comfortable, and I have, I have enjoyed the show traditionally, and I do still like other characters, but now I'm. it's more going to be by rote, I think. I think that's an accurate description. It's kind of like going to be a chore for me when it's season five comes out just because of that but we'll talk about that in a second or we'll talk about it right now whatever floats your boat <laughs> <laughs> so you just jump right to the ending let's, let's do you want to i mean that's otherwise we might not talk about it <laughs> well that's uh, well, just like silly <laughs> Stop being silly. <laughs> okay, well, we can we can talk about your general thoughts on the season, or we can jump straight to the ending, but then it would be warning, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. So if you're still listening, that's your fault. <laughs> so what happened, Krista? Because he dies, and it's horrible. She gets crushed to death. Yes. And it's terrible by Bailey, right? And it was an accident. <sighs> And Soso's there, and Crazy Edge was there, and Daya's there, and everybody's there, and Tasty, oh, that scene with the aerial shot with Tasty, oh, yeah, that yeah. was really difficult. So, and I, because I knew something bad was going to happen, so I kind of like, like I just gotta know, I just gotta know. So I put it on mute, and I fast forwarded to the end so I could see <laughs> because <laughs> oh, I didn't know no, that because. I didn't want to have to. I you know I read something about how that that scene in Tacey's cry is horrible, and I'm like I don't. I, I'm like I'm not mentally prepared for that right now, so I muted it the first time I, I watched it because I did, I didn't think I could handle it because I I how, okay, but I did muting it make it better? <laughs> I, I did eventually watch it. Okay, but still. <laughs> I sometimes watch these things. I stand by my I question. I watch TV in the mornings on the before I go to work, and I don't want to be like emotionally upset when I go to work if I can avoid it. I see. So you chose this to be your morning wake up. I do that. I watch. I want to go to the quarter in the mornings too. So. <laughs> wow, that's heavy. She's violent in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a total does that your day. Right? Or does it just motivate you to get out of the house? <laughs> it's like, like I live alone and like yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay, so yes, this is true. So the, the character that passes is Poussey. And just as a little bit more way of setup. So the big, the big premise of the season is that the Litchfield is overrun by an influx from Max. Because Max is overflowing, and the private company that runs the prison is basically after the almighty dollar and little else. <laughs> And so much so that Mr. Danny Pearson starts a protest against his own father. That's how bad it is. And Poussey and Soso, after the events of the season three finale, they became, you know, a couple. They were in love. It was cute. And then there it was... was a sure relationship I've seen on television in a while. I know. It really was. <laughs> they were able to communicate, even when things were awkward and potentially racist. <laughs> Potentially. Well, actually <laughs> racist. <laughs> well, she was just ignorant, you know, ignorant. Anyway, the point of all of this is is that bec- the, the conditions kind of deteriorated over the course of the season if they didn't deteriorate outright from the beginning. And there was a lot of prisoner punishment being doled out by the guards who were used to Max or the military. The case of the warden's special head of captain of the guard or whatever mm-hmm. was a military ex-military Piscatella. person what Piscatella <laughs> yeah and so this all culminates into a prison protest that then becomes violent and it all happens in the cafeteria and Poussey is the victim and she it's it is an accident Bailey's the young rookie who doesn't really know what he's doing and he thinks he's restraining or protecting her and really he's just holding her down by her neck and suffocating her and it was incredibly hard to watch. 
And then the actress who plays Tasty, uh, <laughs> that's, she should get an Emmy for that. If she didn't, she didn't get an Emmy, did she? She should have gotten an Emmy. <laughs> I don't think... She wasn't nominated, no. Yeah, I don't but think wasn't she... it for the season before? How, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works either. When was the season released? This season was released in June. 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 Then it should have been for this season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then no. She wasn't nominated. She should have been. Yeah. Travesty. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so what do we... I know this is a very heavy note to start. Just ripping off the band-aid, Krista. So what do we think about this? And you can talk about any of the stuff. I think ranching all of it, leading up to the last point of the season, I think they kind of placed everything perfectly to make it the most suspenseful. Even with... Like, I was kind of... Not confused, but the prisoner that got released, and we're kind of following her. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why they chose that character. But at the end, she's on the outside to hear that somebody died. She doesn't know if it's her daughter. Like, that's the one that makes the most sense for a prisoner to watch on the outside to have the most emotional investment into what's happening in there. Is it Caputo is his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, when he is shoving in the faces of the people who want him to blame Bailey and he's defending him, you're like, way to go. I was thought, great job for that character. And then the second Tasty goes running out, I'm like, oh my god. Like, just everything kept building to more ridiculous. I just thought it was well-crafted leading up to the end, which made me like the beginning of the season more, just not as much as I did when I started watching it. And I, I was so disappointed in Caputo, because he had such an opportunity to make it right and he didn't. I mean, he did the best he could. I don't know if there's a... Uh, uh, but the way he never said her name, yes. and the way he basically acted like she was He should have called hoodlum. the cops immediately, I believe. Yeah, and... Yeah. That was my problem with his character. I mean, they should have done something, and because she was... wasn't. I mean, they never said, but we assumed that she was only there on some sort of minor drug charge. And this was her first offense or something, right? I think we have to assume that when they were digging into her past. But there was nothing yeah, to Yeah, I think they did into. say, yeah, that she probably would have been getting out relatively soon. I don't know. she was looking they for made, a job. Because they, they, they tried to make her sound like a hardened criminal. Well, that's what they do in real life. I know, but... Something they, happens. Like I know it's real Make the victim look as right. bad as possible so that then you can somehow justify what happened to them. Like, they somehow deserved to die because they were bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think they did a good job of showing on this show of fiction that it is very difficult. Like, who was wrong in that situation? Who's the bad guy in that whole situation that should be blamed? It's hard to say Piscatella, even though that's what I think it is. But how are you... Oh, this prisoner died because this person accidentally strangled, choked her to death. So that guy should get punished? Like, how I do you that maneuver that? Guard, don't the gun and the... Well, Jeez, that guy. You think it's his fault? <laughs> it was a chain, if you think about it, it was a chain reaction chain of reaction. events. Yeah. And the crazy guy with the gun, that initial fight where they were trying to... With Suzanne. With Suzanne okay. and, and pit her against her paramour there. Well, it's um, the whole, it's the end result of overpopulation, of sending, not treating them like people, basically. Yeah. Not treating them like people. Yeah. That's it's systemic. True. It's... It, that's the problem, and I think that's what they were trying to talk about. That's the commentary mm-hmm. about a lot of things in our criminal justice system, but particularly the prisons, is when you create this sort of situation, this is what happens. So, like, it was bound to happen to somebody at some point if those were the decisions they were making on how they were going to treat these people. Right. So, and as far as... You're right. There isn't really anybody specifically to blame. There's no individual, and that's... You're right. The show did a really good job of portraying that exact problem because that, even though this was all fiction, that happens more often than you would expect in real-life prison systems, even the ones that are run by states Mm -hmm. and not by private corporations because they're so busy trying to make sure they have financially sound houses to hold prisoners for however many offenses that they're doing whatever they can to eke as much money out of it and that usually comes at a human cost and so this actually showed the many layers of the human cost down to a loss of a life and i think they picked pusay now this is just my opinion but of all the prisoners she was one of the most unassuming 
She got along with everybody, including people of, that were not within the African-American population. She was the one who kind of talked through everyone and, and educated other people, including her own friends, about different things. She was kind of the voice of everybody because of her background, which they spent a long time over the past two seasons kind of building up. You know, she was a military brat. She'd gone overseas. She'd seen a lot. She'd done a lot. She was able to communicate very effectively. And I think because of that, that made her sort of the... Even though Piper is supposed to somehow be the one we relate to and fails miserably at this point, which I think the show's finally given up on, <laughs> Poussey ends up being one of the more relatable every man char- or every woman characters in this case and our window into that world. And that's why I liked her so much, because I, well, she's the voice of reason amongst many unreasonable people. <laughs> so She's always been my favorite character. I don't know why. I didn't realize I guess she was such a big fan favorite before this season. But I thought with it had a lot more, a lot to do with more than just, I guess, the prison system. And it almost like touched on just like the Black Lives Matter movement, like in general. And even having like who say the way she died, like it almost evoked Eric Garner's death, which became like, you know, the voice of the Black Lives movement with his I can't breathe. And so that's what made it like really excruciating. And it was like, it was too real. And it was heartbreaking. And I'm so pissed that she died, but it was like, it was a strong choice, I felt. Mm -hmm. I think it was the perfect choice. It was the perfect choice, absolutely. And that's why I can't be mad at them, Mm -hmm. like if they Mm -hmm. kill off my favorite character, because I thought they were extremely intelligent, and it was just, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I I didn't start watching Orange is the New Black the day it was released, like probably most of the viewers. I actually waited a little bit because I was busy. I had other commitments. And so I turn on, you know, Good Morning America. I watch that in the morning when I'm getting ready for work. So the Monday following the release, Good Morning America totally spoiled the ending for me outright with an interview with the actress who plays Poussey. And they talked about... And they talked about her her death in season four. And I'm like, awesome. No warning, no, like, hey, spoiler alert, guys, if you haven't watched it yet. They just went right into it. So I knew before I even started watching season four that she was going to die, but I didn't know when. I at least kept that. I figured it would be toward the end of the season. So I was watching the whole thing knowing what was coming. So I was looking for the clues of, okay, is it happening now? Is it, what are they, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And it still didn't make it easier. I mean, watching, you know, we talked about Tasty just falling over her and her emotional reaction and then them keeping Poussey in the cafeteria with a sheet that over her, was... clean, like carrying everybody out, leaving her there for hours or a day or whatever, not calling her family, not telling the news who it was. So Daya's mom thought maybe her daughter had died. Like it just, it made it really hard. And yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ticked that she's gone. She was one of my favorite characters too, but I agree with Andrew. It was the strongest choice they can make. Because if it was Piper, I wouldn't care. <laughs> We'd almost celebrate. We'd almost celebrate. And... I don't know, but having it be Poussey, it was just, man. It's crazy that you knew beforehand, like... It was was awful. I have now, like, now I know when a big show is released on Netflix, when they release the whole season, I can't watch the news or do anything until... I (laughs) say, thanks, Good Morning America, I love you very, very much, but the fact that you spoil it literally the next business day is... Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, I understand it's hot news. They want to get it on the air to get ratings and all that. But, but to watch it in one day literally takes, what, 12 what? hours? Is it 12 episodes? Well, I think, yeah. I think it was released 13. on, like, a Friday. Or they usually release it towards a weekend for maximum They release it on after. Fridays. Yeah, and so then mm-hmm. it was Monday yeah. morning when they talked about it. So it had been three days. You know, God forbid I didn't have time to watch it in three days. You just don't watch Good Morning Somebody America. did. Every time I saw an orange <laughs> light on social media or something, I, know. Just, I just might bring That's what I did. I went... I went past it, so I didn't. Yeah. So none of the other surprises that we saw on the way in the season, I, that was still kept in the dark for me. But having knowing that Poussey was going to bite the dust before the end of the season was not easy. I, I assumed or knew that someone was when my sister finished it that weekend, and she was like, "It's heartbreaking. You're gonna ball mm-hmm. again." And I was so I'm like, "Okay, someone dies." I was like, and I literally said, "I was like, it better not be Poussey." <laughs> and, <she's laughs> like, oh. and you're like, but oh, then man. you know, but then I'm like thinking about, it, I was like, of course it's not gonna be her. But as the season went on, I felt like they did a lot of foreshadowing almost. Well, and they did and a lot I of started to connect it well, before and they I knew. started going into a lot of the other characters' backstories, and we really didn't see hers mm-hmm. until the 
final mm-hmm. episode where they went into her more of her backstory after she'd already passed away. But she also kept to having like almost like so many good things happen to her yeah. that it was yeah. like you knew it was going to be taken away from her. Then I, I started to get a gut feeling she's going to die. This yeah, like, so her relationship with Soso was great and everything was and with the yeah, and she got to lady. help with yeah. Judy King Nina and Sharp. Yeah, she said she was going to offer her a job. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like when you get out of here, you know you got stuff and I and thought. Right. There were a couple moments where I thought it was either that Lori Petty's character would die because the, the, I did too. They said they're gonna kill her, and then we got her backstory. So I thought, okay, we're finding a lot, a lot about her. And then I thought maybe Crazy Eyes. In the moment when she first started, I thought she was gonna die in that riot because oh. she was the one that was, needed mm-hmm. to be restrained. But I didn't think Pusey would die until he was literally on top of her. Yeah, once she once like, uh, once he put uh, her uh, down, it's like, oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Once he's holding her down, and she's she's even saying peacefully, "I can't breathe," and he still won't get off of her because he can't hear her. He, he can't hear. Yeah, I don't think he realized she what doesn't was have happening. breath to say yeah. it loud enough amongst the. But chaos. it's like I mean, and he was it, just... trying to keep Suzanne. That was half the problem. He was mm-hmm. doing this. No yeah. one can hear, see this. Putting his <laughs> hand on Pusey's neck <laughs> to brace almost his own weight. While trying to hold Suzanne off of him, I feel like his knee was on her. His yeah, knee. His, yeah. Knee yeah. And his hand. And I don't think he real. I think he thought it was on her back. Yeah. But it was enough was going on. I what I thought was interesting about that was what they did with Su- Suzanne. Yeah. Suzanne, crazy eyes. Suzanne. I thought like she would be more devastated by it instead of wanting to just feel what it's like to be crushed. Because I could have seen her thinking it was her fault. She may still get there if we learned anything from her experience with V, but I think her initial reaction and has always been that she doesn't, it doesn't quite right. settle Yeah, she at has first. a clear cognitive impairment. She was just so upset when she <laughs> was forced to beat her ex-girlfriend or almost girlfriend that I thought she would be even more upset after right. Pusse, mm-hmm. but she's kind of... I think that was almost Suzanne's way of dealing with it, though. She wanted yeah. to know what it felt like. Because I think she does feel a little guilty, and so that's why she wants to know what it feels like. She wants to know, you know, with the library books, like, she wanted to be crushed. She wanted to felt how Pusey felt in the final moments. But and I, think, I also yeah. think the reaction to the riot was because there was so much that was focused on her. I think we learned that when all eyes are on her, she starts to do this, you know, just really gets amped up. And so I think her reaction in that moment is more of a, you know, no, this is not right. This is not right. Whereas in the other riot, in the other, the cafeteria, there's so much going on. She knows it's wrong, but her attention isn't focused on Pusey either. It's focused on the guards who have already, you know, put her in this compromising position. And I liked... I think not liked, but found it interesting that they did it in the not the second to the last episode that she died. It wasn't at the very end, so we got to see everyone's reaction. And her well, character kind of ended on a note of hope. She did. It was yeah. Cool. But I think the reason they did it second to last is so they could explore the aftermath. Because if they would have ended it just with her yeah. dead, they would have had to save. All of the, you know, the leaving her body in the cafeteria and what do we do with the media and her family until the start no. of season five. Which was, would have been bad. It would have been bad. And so I think, well, it's very much like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones always has the big battle, like the second to last episode. It's never the last episode. And it's, I think it's just very smart. They give you that big climax and they let you kind of come down. And I think the And con- set up some dominoes. Yes, I haven't, I haven't said that in a couple of podcasts. So yes, they set up some downtimes, and but I think too they they gave us that hopeful note where the very last moment we see of season four is Pusey in the past looking. She literally looked at the camera. She broke the fourth wall, and she was just kind of. I think that was her giving her goodbye to the fans and the character, and that's oh. what got that's what almost got me more than the death. It was oh, yeah. that last moment. Well, and that aftermath was important because aside from the hopeful note, so I guess we'll just work backwards. Aside from the hopeful note, we also get the reaction. All the prisoners come together, basically. There's been this huge divide throughout the whole season. Max versus Litchfield resident. Rachel versus 
well, all the races basically were battling each other. Guards versus prisoners, you know, there was these growing tensions and the death of Poussey gave them all a rallying point to join together. First with the funeral or the wake, quote unquote, out in the yard, because of course with the cafeteria and the body being left there, they were all moved out into the yard. And then we get to this situation where they're trying to let Bailey go, and if you recall, Daya, mm -hmm. who has become friends with the Dominican gang, much to the chagrin of her mother, her mother and yeah. also I don't remember. <laughs> Gloria, yes. also Gloria, she ends up in the middle of it with a gun pointed at him, and that's really the cliffhanger moment. Not Bailey. Yeah. This is no. the, Bailey's the young kid. Oh, who the, was it then? I forget. With the gun? Pumps? Uh, Oh, oh, the the mad guy with the gun. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're right. Because Bailey did, but when, the, when Bailey left, she, he he tried to walk into the dorm and apologize. Oh right. And Piper stopped him. Like, yeah. oh, that's a bad plan. You need to go he, home. Yeah, he ended yeah. up at home. Yeah. There's so much going on in that moment that it ended. What's her face? I decided to visit the prison that day. Caputo's girlfriend. And she's in there somewhere oh, in the prison. Oh, girlfriend. Oh, yeah. I did not like her. Nina either. Sharp is right in the middle. I <laughs> Nina Sharp. <laughs> is that Judy King? Judy Everyone just watched Fringe. <laughs> I did. That's uh, great. Judy, Judy King is trying to leave. Mm -hmm. But it's the paperwork says she's gone already. So they're going to have like they're gonna have to deal with that, that they definitely lied because she's clearly in the middle of this riot. Mm -hmm. like, she might even get shot there. We don't know. So what's going to happen with the gun? Who's going to take it from whom and do what? I just like the... I don't want Daya to shoot that guard, but I don't care what happens to that guard. But I don't want Daya to, like, oh, now she's in there for murder. And yeah, you don't want the good. consequences for yeah. her because she, too, has potential if she could just mm -hmm. break like the cycle. It. Like, yeah. just stop. That's another reason why I think they kind of ended it perfectly because there's a lot of other characters that they ended with the gun be like, oh, just shoot them. Who cares? You're on him for life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. one of the, those older women, the gardening women. That was one of yeah. my favorite characters this season. I mean, she season. could she could totally do it, and it would make zero difference. Well, of course right. she did. She cut up the other guard <laughs> into pieces. <laughs> the fake guard. But she and then she had that moment where Bailey, we're getting his backstory here, and they have friends throw something. She's like, I'm a human. Like I felt bad for this. Person who I've just in this other this season present chopped someone up into pieces and is threatening to kill somebody else. Like they did this. That's why I like this show. There's levels. Yeah, but <laughs> there are also levels. Clearly done bad things, and we still like them. But they've done bad things. Yeah. And then there's people that like they've done some bad things, but like they seem so good that you really root for them to be rehabilitated and get out and actually make it work, even though we've seen that struggle. With a few characters as it is. I mean, because how many of them from Murder that we know about? Because Yoga Jones and. Is Crazy Eyes in for. We Murder? don't know what Crazy Eyes Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Is that kid fell? Yeah, the, the kid. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. We saw that this season. Mm -hmm. Would it be Murder, though, or would it be Manslaughter? But nobody is there to know what happened. Like, she can't. She's probably not going to be able to. Uh, Articulate. Nobody was else was in there in the apartment when oh, it happened. Super yeah. So nobody knows if she so pushed I'm, or I'm, didn't push. Or... I'm pretty sure she's probably in there for involuntary manslaughter at least. Well, because she. I mean, I. Th you would have to assume based on the events. I mean, he t called his parents because he was like this. You know, this lady and kidnapped. He called nine one one. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to figure that somebody responded, and you know, he toppled over the balcony before anybody got there. So. Mm -hmm. That must be why she's in there. I think yeah. that's what we're supposed to make the leap for. And with mm -hmm. little to no chance of getting out. Right. Yeah. Although it's surprising that, since we're talking about Suzanne, that she wasn't institutionalized prior to coming to Litchfield. Or has she been? Is that something I forget? I don't, I don't know. Think so. I don't know. They, really, they really haven't gotten into all of that yet. And, you know, the fact that we saw the death of her little friend... You know, that's kind of the first real leap into why she's here and what her story in prison is. And I think they'll probably save more of that for season five, if not season six. I still don't get why her family, like, doesn't visit her or we don't see it. Like, they, they, they did in, like, season one. Did, so maybe we're supposed to assume they, they just keep doing, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. season one, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we got very, yeah, her, because her adoptive family... She was adopted by a white family. And before they realized they could have kids, and then they had her younger sister, and... 
So, I don't know. I, I think her family may come, but I don't think they come frequently. Maybe we're, I mean, not, either we're supposed to make the leap or we're not. I, I, I don't know. So, what else did you think about? The, where are you on the love to hate or hate to love Piper spectrum now? Oh, I will oh. start since I've hated her the most. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this season, I hated her the least. Yeah. Yeah. It started off, I like, what the hell is she doing? I don't care. But, like, <laughs> she's trying to not be in prison. Yeah, now she's trying to Which work. I, is something... Yeah. She kind of reached the low point last season, I think, and now she's coming up out of the bottom. It got to the point where I don't think she stood up on the table and by any means to get attention, to get... No, she like, did it out of solidarity. Yeah, I... Uh, she really was trying to help. Like, I yeah. enjoyed that moment. I like yeah. how they wrote her character to that point where I'm like, why is she doing this uh, and being annoyed by it? But she's still not my favorite character by any means. I just mm -hmm. wasn't annoyed by her storyline after a couple of episodes. Probably after she got the swastika. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> once she got branded, I kind of felt, I felt a little bad for her. Because as she was too. getting in with the white, the uh, white supremacists, then she was like, oh, she didn't this know how bad. to handle it. I was still like... This is your stupid fault. I Just, think she was kind of drunk on power, though. I think yeah. she liked being in charge and being seen, you know, as the the big bitch of the prison, essentially. And but the fact when she got branded by the rival gang, I think that was her turning point. Well, yeah, it's definitely her wake up call that she cannot control things the way she mm -hmm. thought Wants she was to. going to be able to. I think she comes in with this: "I'm smart. I can manipulate all the people." Yeah. But people are not that easily manipulated. It's a really mm -hmm. dangerous thing to think that you're going to be able to control that many people from that many walks of life. And a lot of them are smart in their own ways, too, that maybe she's underestimating. Yeah. And she comes from a totally different world than a lot of those other women do. Absolutely. So they have an understanding of people's motivations, I think, that she does not. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, <laughs> it has some very dire consequences for her. Mm -hmm. And I think she learns from it, though. Like, I think there is a shift there where she realizes this is not her world. She's just living in it right now. Yeah. You know? And I thought, too, that the fact that Red and company changed it into a window, the swastika became a window as a reminder, you know, whenever a door closes, a window will open. I thought that was kind of poetic for Piper. And I think that's now she's kind of, like Amanda said, she's just going to live through the rest of her sentence in prison and try to get back out. Well, and as crappy as she was to everyone, mm -hmm. they still then took care of her when it really came down to it. Yeah. And that's a really powerful message. Mm -hmm. That, like, you screwed, screwed all of us over yeah. and been so terrible, and yet, like, they really take that family thing seriously. Yeah. So, like, you screwed up, but now we're going to take care of you because... Yeah, we're going to get you back on the right track, yeah. essentially. Yeah, it's very poignant, it's very powerful. Moment. Yeah, I'll be interested to see where Piper goes next season, because her sentence has got to be getting close to being done. Did we have any gauge on where they are in the time of year this time? End of summer, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. Or like early I'll fall, be because the, the it started when... They broke out in the in the lake, and that would have the been lake, and that yeah. would have been late summer. So, uh, and I don't think we got to a holiday. So, I'm going to guess it's September, early October at the end. And when did she start her sentence? It's been about probably about just about a year. Okay, so she'll have a couple more months. When and was her sentence? Fifteen months, wasn't it? Well, it was like yeah, thirteen, fourteen. So, <laughs> each season's about three months long. We have at least one more with Piper. I could see them ending the show. I could see it, this next season easily be the demise no, they, of Litchfield. They've though. already renewed it for two more seasons. Yeah, it's renewed through season seven. Mm -hmm. That doesn't okay. Seven, I mean, they don't have to seven. do it. Okay. Like they make actors sign on for trilogies of movies that yeah. they don't. I mean, it's still good canon, but it's Netflix's highest rated. I, I, show. I, but I could see Piper leaving. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then doing one more, and then maybe calling it good. Well, I could see, you know, if they did have Piper leave to keep up with the others, you know, the thematic storyline that they're doing, I can see showing her life as she's readjusting to life outside of prison, and then... Because that's going to be an adjustment. Yeah. How long, yeah. or how far have they gone away from the real a Piper? A lot. A lot, okay. <laughs> she, she, Basically, the real Piper... <laughs> she's still married to Larry. La yeah, kept her nose down, basically just worked out every day, got out early, and... I mean, yeah, some of the 
a lot of the stuff from season one, of, like the specific incidences that happened, were very close to the book. But after, I mean, after she kind of got used to what, like, kind of the day to day, she just kind of kept her nose down. And she did what I wanted the character to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I found not too believable in watching. I can totally see them just, like, letting her get released and continue on without her. I mean, she's obviously yeah. the least favorite. Like, and they've showed the characters. <laughs> the characters are people like all these other characters enough that she's not piloting the ship. We're not going to miss yeah, her. Yeah, she's not our surrogate anymore like she was in season one. I don't think they realize, like, how much people would hate her. Like, I feel like they didn't realize that, so they kind of just went with it. And I feel like they made us hate her even more, and now they're kind of bringing us back. So I don't know. But I feel like a lot of the backlash she got during season one, like, they probably didn't expect. I don't know, but I feel like, I mean, Orange is the New Black is Piper's journey. So I think at this point, we have have reached that halfway point. Yeah. She's gone as low as she can go, and now she's on the upswing. And they can probably continue it through the next, what, two or three seasons, Mm -hmm. you said? So, but I think it's going to end with her journey. Yeah. I I don't think the show will survive without her. Even though we would like it to, I don't think it will. I would agree with I that. I mean, I think it's possible to. I just don't think they will. I think what we I think can milk it. I think bit. they'll milk it, and I, I think you know a comment that was made during the the Game of Thrones panel. I don't know why we keep comparing these two shows, but it keeps happening. <laughs> applies here too, where there's really no like stipulated rule about the passage of time. There's no real consistent passage of time. We don't know that it's been day to day or week to week or month to month, except when they do holiday celebrations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really that's our, our only, only indication. When Dio's pregnant. And diet, yeah. Yeah. But she's not pregnant anymore. No. So really we could just they could do, you know, a season of two weeks. It could be this is the two weeks after Pousset, for example, would be season five. That would mm-hmm. potentially be not good, but I'm just saying it's possible that yeah. they could do it that way. Right, well, because the last two episodes of this season were the what, the same day or a few hours or day and a half. Exactly. Was, yeah. It was almost two days. Yeah. I felt the season felt like a shorter time. I think so too. Than most. Yeah. I agree with that as well. I don't think a lot of time passed. Mm-mm. Not really from the lake to this point. No. It was just from the, the lighting in the last episode when they were outside, felt more fall. So it was definitely September, if I, nothing else. I think it was. It did seem like it was starting to cold in the last episode. Yeah, they were all. They were all wearing sweatshirts, mm-hmm. and you could see their breath at times. Yeah, yeah, that happened. So, how did you feel the the season itself went back to kind of the older story structure? This was talked about quite a bit in the media, where they were trying to harken back to sort of the season one, season two format. Well, maybe not the season, more so the season one format. Season two was V, wasn't it? Season two was V. Season one was, here are all our prisoners and their backstories, with Piper kind of at the forefront and everybody else kind of filling in behind them. And it was a little bit the same, except that Piper wasn't the lead here this time. I mean, she's got star billing, but she's not the lead. Right. No one was really the lead, right? No one was, no. It was a, a hodgepodge of situations as opposed to actual real villains. There were no real villains. They were bad people and people making bad choices, but there were no... I do think that one guy was kind of a villain. But Which one guy? Was the one guy who made Maritza eat the rat. Swallow it. He's a bad guy, but he wasn't the linchpin around what the whole season was involved. Right. No, he was right. like just this opportunist evil dude. Well, Piscatella almost was, because that's who they, we got to get him fired. They, mm-hmm. Even after this is what this guard did to me, they all said, yeah. we have to get Piscatella. But it wasn't, the whole season wasn't focused around getting Piscatella out of there. Right. It was one of the plots, but it wasn't the main focus. And Piscatella, they actually gave him a moment to sort of spout off about his reasoning for why that he's the way he is, yeah. which sounded perfectly logical and rational when he was saying it. Now, whether it was an application or not, that's, of course, a different story. He some moments... Like when Lolly was freaking out, and where he was like, "Are you just standing there and making fun of her? Mm-hmm. That's terrible." He did. You, mm-hmm. he did have some moments, yeah. Where you're like, "There is a person beneath that exterior. It's probably deep in there." But and he did something wrong. We got a glimpse of that when Caputo Caputo said something to him that kind of put him in his place about what he did to the inmates at the other prison. Yeah, he kind of stepped above his station at the other prison. But. Yeah. We don't know what that is yet. No. Yeah, I don't think they specified it. They it sort of implied it, that there was a casualty was there. Like, that we'll find out in season five, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe so. So what would you think about it? 
the season as a whole? The season as a whole, or the way they told the story up until What the did ending. everyone think about Healy's story? <laughs> I just didn't care. You didn't care? Not really. I was more focused on Sophia and Mickey and sister. But we're, like, we're done with Healy, right? Like, that's... I don't see I don't, them I don't checking in on I him. I don't think we're ever going to be done, done. He but. came back. They called him and he came back. Mm-hmm. No, he didn't. After he checked himself in? No, he didn't. I don't think he oh, did. yeah, oh, that's right. He right. checked yeah. himself in. Yeah. Like, I think, uh, I the think, ending's all blurred together for me. I think we me. will check on him hmm. every so often, but isn't Pornstash, isn't he back? Or am I... Did they announce that somewhere? I don't think the Pornstash yeah. is back. Am I thinking of a different season? That's a different season. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Pornstash is gone ever since Aleda... He's in prison. He's okay. in prison. His mom didn't get Daya's baby because... Yeah. You know, yeah. Aleda interfered there yeah. and told lies. Yep, different so. season. Previous season. Previous okay. season. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, but I You're think, right. I Healy think, is now yeah. in an institution because we found out about his mother mm-hmm. yeah. who had mental illness as mm-hmm. well. So. I think that'll be good for him. I thought the whole thing was a bit of a leap. I don't, I didn't think so. Like, I just, it gave us the moments, but it, I, I just thought we missed some, I, I thought I missed something. You have to look at Healy's character arc overall, over across the entire seasons. I feel like that's why I assume he's gone gone, is that they rushed it. Is that he checked himself in kind of quickly, based on not much. I feel like if it was... I don't know, see, I I didn't think so, because... Well, he went to, I guess he went to try to kill himself. His quick, like, mood swings and all that other, you know, the stuff you just mentioned, I just, I feel like it wasn't that much of a leap. I don't think it happened too fast. They gave us the breadcrumbs. They just finally took mm-hmm. advantage of it. Well, I think it speaks to mental health issues that you don't necessarily know, and they may just be little things that aren't quite right with a person, that aren't sitting right, and it doesn't take a whole lot to take that next step and push yourself over the edge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there's the mental illness in his family, which we found out about, and that's a huge thing. But you can see it in his just desperation to always connect with some of these women like he mm-hmm. clearly has mother issues mm. and now we know you know like yeah. now we know why and it's he wants to help them and it's the ones he I think that most remind him of that situation that he wants to help the most that he really wants to try and maybe protect but he can't because those things are unpredictable and they're messy and sad you know and I felt bad for him I did like yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a teacher, and so part of my job is just see the best in everyone. But he had a lot of things that made him the way he was, and had he had help earlier on, he may have been a very different person. I think he had a good heart. He just didn't really know how to deal with Everything anything, else. really. Well, and to piggyback on that, I don't think it was a leap because he has the tools. I mean, that's what he devoted his life to was sort of this quasi psych I mean he doesn't really have a degree, but a quasi psychological yeah. pursuit. And that's why he did take such a special interest in prisoners like Lolly, for example, mm-hmm. was Amanda is alluding to. So to me it wasn't that much of a reach. I mean he saw himself at a low point during a very difficult time. We see him in the river. He drags himself back out of the river. I think he just knew based on his past that it was better to check himself in and cut it off rather than let it progress to the point where his mother had gotten to or where Lolly had gotten to. Mm-hmm. So that's my opinion. But I do think Kristen is right, Nick. I think we won't ever not see Healy again. And his stay might be temporary if he voluntarily checked himself into the institution. He could mm-hmm. voluntarily check himself back out, That's too. That's true. So yeah. we don't know what's going to happen with him. What about some of the other things? No one's really talked about Alex. I was just going to say, I really want to talk about when they cut up that body, because that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she says oh, with almost too much <laughs> glee. <laughs> okay. So talk about it, Krista. What would you like to say? Why? Why? I'm not the only one who has a macabre sense of things. <laughs> did she cut him up? I thought they all did. Yeah, it was a Lolly joint effort. And who Alex got the joints? And <laughs> I don't know. But she, <laughs> well, what's the garden lady's name? Nah. Garden, garden lady. lady. It's fine. We're good. The older garden lady. Let me think about it. Right. You keep going. They have nicknames and last names, and I can't keep track of them. Well, <laughs> effectively, 
the guard that almost murdered Alex, Lolly knocked him out. Frida. Frida. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And they thought he was dead, and then he ended up not being dead. And they t t texted pictures to the, her boss of Alex laying fake dead on the ground, and then they killed him, they suffocated him, and then they cut him up and buried him in the garden. Well, what else are you going to do with that? Al I, isn't <laughs> Alex the only one know, that knows that she actually killed him? Because they thought... Everyone, the people in the about thought, it, thought Lolly, Lolly killed, thought she killed him. And then Alex went back to like hide the body, and she had to yeah. actually kill him. And then they found, and then when they were adding on to... Building new quarters for more yeah, prisoners. They found, when they were digging things up, they when found When they were digging parts. up the garden. Yeah. Well, because they were buried. They chopped <laughs> them up into little pieces, and like a them foot, in a hand, bags. all that, and put them in burlette bags. So that was the fertilizer for the garden. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Things were growing, like, amazing. <laughs> wow. This is what Krista took away. <laughs> I was thinking this. But yeah. I guess I'm a little morbid also, because I kind of was, like, hoping that they did kill Lolly. Lala? What's her name? Lolly. 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 Because just, like, when Rod's like, yeah, we have to kill her. I was like, I kind of would like that. I mean, I like the character, but I just thought that that would have been fun. The way they showed the psych card, like, she, she might have been better off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but when Red was like, you have to kill her, I'm like, shit, it's about to go down. That's what I I'm like, yeah. that's we saw her, gonna be hoping fun. Because that we saw her backstory, too, so that's why I'm like, oh, yeah. maybe we're done with her. <laughs> yeah. Now, did they, did they bring her off to the psych ward? They did. Yes, they Thank did. you. It's been a while. They it, did. It was like a shot I mean, from a horror movie. Season. It did yeah. not seem yeah. like a real thing. Yeah. Healy sort of realized, I think this was before Healy left. Yeah, it was. That there was no help in her. She mm -hmm. was too far gone. Yeah. Well, didn't she say she killed that guard? Yeah, she it, admitted. She admitted to, oh, she did admit yeah. it. You're she right. It's been a while him. since I she had admitted finished to the doing season. all to killing him and burying the body and cutting him up and the whole thing. And, and that's Healy, why they sent her to sight. And Healy just wasn't sure if she was lying or what was happening. Something bad in her brain. Mm -hmm. And the first time there was like a drone. Yes. And got Lolly off. I kind of thought that yeah. was dumb. But then I'm like, oh, they're just trying to get pictures of the celebrity. And, like, this all makes sense. Yeah. And that's how she would react, especially because... <laughs> she thinks the NSA is watching her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that was funny. <laughs> what about the actress that played the Lolly in the past? Uh, Wasn't that a different person? No. No. No, it was still her. No. -uh. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. There was a, ver a young, young version who that was, was different. Who was cast. Yeah, is that who you're talking about? But when they when showed her with like the long, like the little black or dark brown bob, that was still the same actress. Yeah, they've, it took me a while. To My internet wasn't working. They aged, working they working aged the work. actress up a little bit for present day Lolly, and then they aged her down a little bit for past Lolly. Yeah, there, but she was a. There was an initial shot of her as like a teenager that was not. That was not her, but the. But the actress was amazing. It was perfectly cast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, segue. Okay. So the drone getting the pictures of Judy King, and I like how you know the African American group of women were trying to get pictures of Judy King with was it Tasty? Was no, it wasn't. It was Black, Black Cindy, Cindy was Black leading Cindy's that charge. Was trying to <laughs> get the pictures and be her. May December interracial romance to get money. Yes, they found that this. Wor which worked out. Yeah, because they had the stolen cell phone with the camera, and they from the woman who was her bunkmate with the hijab that she they did not get along. Yeah, they did not get along. Not get along. Just there was an ongoing dispute there. I have her name as well, but you keep to Abdullah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. she's part of their family now, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. She's been brought in because of the whole celebrity photo grabbing thing. Yeah. Well, and Pousse, <laughs> yeah. I feel like they wasn't she sitting with them for the like when people yeah. kept giving them gifts. Yeah. They let her sit with her. Yeah. Yeah. And she showed them her hair. Mm-hmm. She did. <laughs> Which is a big step. Well, also I think we learned that the hijab might be for appearances with the showing of that particular mm -hmm. hair. Well, it. Yeah. Because she could hide things there. Well, there's mm -hmm. that, but also in a lot of cultures, uh, they dress up for all the other women. So it may have been something that she did for herself, truly. So Okay. Well, it was pink, wasn't it? Red. Red. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looked pink. 
Jeez. <laughs> They're pretty close on the color wheel. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Depends on the lighting. So no, everybody cared about the body, but no one cares about Alex. She was very traumatized. She'll get over it. <laughs> and he, she is for like the first time ever. She's done a lot of yeah. Stuff. That's true. She's yeah. made poor but choices. She's never murdered someone. No. So like now we know this is up. where her line is. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Amanda she finally has, has no regrets. sympathy for Alex. <laughs> this is where she finally has regrets. Listen, she like, she's the reason Piper's there. That's true. Not, she, Piper's not well, there for her own choices. Well, that but she's she won. also was she's the there because of Piper. Yes, also, this now. is true. Well, I don't really, we don't like, we don't feel bad for either one of them. There's recipro- reciprocal <laughs> toxicity I, there. I, I don't feel bad, but I never really felt bad for her, because I think she fully understood what she was doing. Piper was too stupid to understand what she was doing. Yeah. I think <laughs> that was the case. Oh, like, she just... really thought she was just going to get away with it, whereas Alex knew the world she was stepping into, and she had seen what these people were like, and she fully stepped into that world, and I can't feel sorry for you when you make that choice. I just can't. Sorry. Amanda has spoken. (laughs) (laughs) Amanda agrees. (laughs) I just think we should add more red. (laughs) You always say (laughs) that. So I love red. I I will agree with you, though. They were a little anemic on the red stuff this Mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. She wasn't quite as omnipresent. She might have been busy doing stuff for the Star Trek 50 year anniversary. She could have been traveling all over the place. I don't know. Maybe you're right. And, you know, so then it was Judy a good King's cause. There, you know, to, to take some of the old lady vibe off. The, the ginger right. old lady, don't yeah. last. Yeah. <laughs> so, she's also a professional. Yeah, she yeah. was, yeah. Her and that Yoga Jones thing, mm-mm. The, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> what's what's, 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 what's the his name? Freeway with Luchek. He had an interesting story arc. He did. Yeah. I and mean, Nikki's back, so it's something. I didn't. I was going to mention Nikki. I do want to say I didn't need to see the three-way. So how do we feel about <laughs> Nikki's return? <laughs> I was so excited. I was when excited I saw her well. for those few minutes in Max, like that when just she was that, cleaning when she was just, well, just that first reveal. Oh yeah. Of Nikki, I was like, yes, there is a god. She's back. I texted you. <laughs> I yeah. remember we texted each other. We were like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "Are you Have on you the subject?" This? Oh my god, Nikki. Nikki's back. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. They had seen it before me, and they were all knowing, And because they asked me, where are you in the season? And I said, oh, I'm not very far along. Pussy and so-so, they're so cute. And, and they got all cagey. <laughs> very, very cagey. No I was like, no. What about Pensatucky this yeah, season? It was kind of more of, she evolved. It was more of the last season. Like it was, it was more of last. Just yeah. working on her relationship with Boo. It, they moved her character forward, but just a, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Well, they they had so many other things to focus on. It's hard to have every character make these and great they, leaps and bounds. They tried to make us feel bad for yeah. the her, guard, her that, rapist. Yeah. Was, um, but they try to explain it like she said that it how it would help her to move on. Like that conversation with Boo. Yeah. Like that would help her deal with it. So I. I guess I don't mind that. I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. Like, last season, the boo Pensatucky relationship was kind of awesome to watch, but this season didn't really care too much about it. I thought it went on for too long. That's what I thought about Pensatucky and Boo's ongoing dialogue. I understood why they had it, but there was definitely a line at which it was like, okay, Boo really needs to accept that Pensatucky needs this particular kind of forgiveness, and Pensatucky needs to kind of accept that Boo's not ever going to back down from where she is. And I think they got there, but it was just, it felt like a distraction from some of the other things that I didn't really need. Yeah. That's how I felt. And I had a strong enough opinion to say it. (laughs) (laughs) One part that that just seemed to always take me out of the story was the whole drug-running Maritza and Mm -hmm. Flaka thing. The thing that started off as the runoff panty sniffing business mm-hmm. and became yeah. drugs. Well, and we also had a I couple of backstories hands. with yeah. Maritza and with Blanca, who is the unibrow. Right, no, I love Blanca. Okay. <laughs> well, there was some question about her name last time, so I'm just throwing it out there. Blanca. I loved her backstory. She had a pretty badass backstory. Mm-hmm. And then now we know that guy who she's texting. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> Little clues get sprinkled into the situation. Mm-hmm. He was very attractive, if I remember correctly. 
He was pretty attractive. Yeah. I'd say so. I don't recall any of this. I've got to be honest. I don't <laughs> next story at all. I'm sitting here going, what? It's the she one where she was cleaning from the old woman, and the old woman was very crotchety, and mm-hmm. you do everything. Oh, well, the boyfriend yeah. in the room while she was there. And pretend it did, didn't happen, or just... Yeah. Oh, no, they... Are you talking about the, the sex scene? Yeah. 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 No, she looked right at her. <laughs> yeah, well, that was... No, but then the next day, she just was doing her job like it didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I don't I don't think she was pretending. I just think she was being no. like, now what are you going to say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's really a huge was. She was yeah. Yeah. That, was, so. that was a That was a dare. That's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> That was a drawing I, a line def- in the sand. I defy you to say something like this. <laughs> yeah. Stop me. Go mm-hmm. ahead and try. And it's what fueled, actually, right. because she was the one that kind of got the ball rolling with the protest in the cafeteria mm-hmm. yeah. because they made her stand up there and she was going to be damned if she was going to cave. So because and, of that story. Yeah. All the, the, all the new guards in that, in that house. Oh, I don't understand the house. And they were just the house drunk was weird. all the time. Yeah, they played they a lot of beer pong. All the guards were horrible. Except for Bailey. Right. And maybe they did that on purpose, but even the one guard we didn't know that well, then he's the one like consoling Bailey, talking about the horrible, horrible things he's done. And saying, but we're good people. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not good people. That was weird. I, I didn't like the... The, how they had housing for the guards? No, I just didn't like the the setup that they needed this house so that there would... It, it felt contrived. Oh, here's this random house back here all of a sudden. Well, they, <laughs> well, they found they, the house no, at the end of the lake. No, they off that when they were... When the prison first started, part of the job perks for the guards was to have on-site housing that you wouldn't have to pay for. They explained it. I just thought, and I think thought it, it was contrived. In, in season three, we see it, right? No. Isn't that where Crazy Eyes ends up? That Yeah, that's in the first episode of this season. Yeah. Yeah. With the girlfriend. Her and her yeah, to-be girlfriend they, they find it. upon the house, and then... She licks the door, if I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah, the <laughs> And Suzanne's like, even Suzanne was like, oh, I don't know about this plan. We're not gonna, we're not gonna live here. We need to go back. True facts. Yeah. What about Sophia? I feel like we should also talk about oh. Sophia and her being lost oh in the shoe for so long. I just want to pretend yeah. it didn't happen. I know, me too. And like, the... I think like that's what happened last time we did an episode for this show. <laughs> we just pretended Sophia's storyline didn't happen. Which is terrible because it's like what they're trying to do to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop stop the mirroring most... the art, people. It's just the most heartbreaking. <laughs> I mean, her storyline almost broke, it it broke my heart more than Poussey. I mean, looking in, like, sister looking in and seeing all the blood, blood from her slitting her wrist with the magazine or whatever she had to read. The staples. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. But just having the blood, like, all over the floor and the walls and sister's mm-hmm. reaction, not knowing if Sophia was alive or dead. Well, Nikki first. Yeah. yeah Nikki, Nikki discovered her first. Yeah. Because she was on the janitorial staff staff or, yeah. or detail for yeah. Max when she was there. Mm-hmm. And then having her and Nikki then having to clean up. Was it Nikki who had to clean up the room or was it Sister? Nikki. They asked Nikki, Nikki to do it, yeah. yeah. Sister sister got herself thrown in the shoes mm-hmm. so that she, she could, could check, check on, on Sophia. Sophia because no one would tell her anything. Yeah. So she kept coming up with new ways to try mm-hmm. to piss off the guard because she was, yeah. you know... Failing at all that stuff because she's a nun. <laughs> she's a nun. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she eventually did something enough <laughs> to finally be oh, okay. Go to the show. Yeah. <laughs> so. some, I think it was breakfast is closed and she like refused to not get a line or something like really dumb. Yeah, it was yeah. really lame, but it was enough. Yeah, yeah, it was enough for her. to The go. guards gave up. They were like, okay, yeah. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Yeah, and then they, was it Sister who had the cell phone who sent the image out to? Yes, because it was in her hoo-ha. Mm-hmm. Well, Caputo sent it out. Yeah. In the end, yeah. In the end, he's the one who sent it out. Sister was the one who took the photograph to show to Sophia's ex-wife and her family. Then that's who alerted the news that this is what's going on, and that's how they got Sophia finally out of the shoe and back into Litchfield. And she was a zombie when she got that. So is she still on the show because Laverne Cox is, is in a in pilot. The land. Yeah, yeah, she's in a pilot on CBS. Now it's with Katherine Heigl, so I don't think it's gonna last very long. No, that's, that's <laughs> Sorry, that's Katherine the, Heigl. The when it's Katherine Heigl. She's in a commercial for like kitty litter. Catherine Sophia Heigl. is? Katherine Heigl. <laughs> Katherine Heigl, she's sunk that low. But no, I mean because Laverne Cox now she's 
starring as Dr. Frankenfurter in Fox's Ugh. Rocky Horror Show that's coming out later in October. And oh, that's a, that's discussed. Yeah. You're not happy with that? Not with her. I mean, I'm fine with her casting. I'm just that whole thing. It, that's another conversation. But that's no, true. It looks like <laughs> that's another <laughs> <podcast>. <laughs> but, Musicals I mean, are a touchy subject yeah. for Andrew Listener. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's becoming more and more in demand. But, I mean, the actress who played So-So, she starred in Waitress on Broadway when it opened earlier this year. She's not there anymore. It's different with the network show, though. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the cop guy, he had to leave it when he got... Yeah. Uh, he got away with murder. murder. They wrote yeah. him out. I mean, yeah, So-So and Danielle Brooks, I mean, they were both on Broadway at the same time. Yeah. And they had big shows, this, or big mm-hmm. plots this season. They yeah, and that. I've seen other, of uh, you know, inmates, they pop up on other shows. Like, Pusey did a guest in on The Catch on ABC this past season, and I've seen... A few of the other ladies pop up here and there. And other well, shows. Gustin's are one thing, but Laverne Cox is actually a principal in this new show. Yeah. And I believe it's a drama. It's an hour-long drama. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Doubt. It yeah. didn't look very good in CPU. didn't pick it up, sorry. Mm-hmm. But, but chances are, too, with it being a network show versus a Netflix show, their shooting schedules probably aren't the same. And I would assume... I mean, Orange is the New Black is going to be a cash cow for all the actors. Yeah. Well, Laverne, she's going to want to keep it. Her character really hasn't been in the last two seasons that much. That much. So she was probably, you know, doing the pilot for Doubt or whatever during this past season. And That's true. We'll see. Well, if it There's got a- picked up, they'll be filming soon. And right. Orange is now filming. Mm-hmm. So maybe it yeah. would conflict. I don't, know. I don't think I don't it'll think conflict it with the next season. Mm-hmm. No, because, I mean, their their schedules are so different, and they can work around where if she's not needed on the set of Doubt one day, she yeah. can go and film everything else. I just hope she hasn't left, because I feel like there's a lot more story to tell with her. I don't think she's left. I think, okay. you know, the season was a little light, for, but her storyline made sense. And now that she's kind of getting back to normal in Litchfield, I don't think she's going anywhere anytime soon. And especially because she has become somewhat of a spokesperson for the trans community and the the storyline fills that for her. Mm -hmm. It gives her that platform. I feel like there should still be that platform for a while, especially Mm -hmm. given current climates, if you will. Yeah. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's not going anywhere. But I think they will allow her her freedom to go and do Rocky Horror and to do doubt and that way they can keep her on the show and keep her story going it's gonna be the greatest job because i mean with such a big cast your filming's got to be so laid back but yet mm-hmm. you're in every episode so you're still getting that paycheck and you're wearing really <laughs> comfortable costumes yeah. like you're not wearing corsets and shit so yeah there's just, just saying clouds like, with silver linings all over the place i'm a positive person <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to cover from season four, or, this was season four, mm-hmm. or is there any inmate at this point that you feel needs to have a focus or have a focus return to them come season five? Red. <laughs> Other than Red, because <laughs> Nick Nikki. mentioned Red already. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Nikki. Why? Sorry. Because she was gone for so long. Well, that could be a Nikki Red story. Really. Well, and see, and that that's another thing too is their relationship. I love Nikki and Red's mother daughter relationship, and I really I remember what we said previously that Nikki is kind of the heart of the show, and we really noticed when she wasn't there. I think we'll notice with Pusey being gone. She really had I'm going to call her maybe the soul of the show. It'll I thought it was cool how Pensatucky helped her with her trying to quit cold turkey mm-hmm. during the lockdown. That was kind of sweet. I'm most looking forward to seeing for season five how Tasty and So-So react to Pusey's death. So I feel like it'll... it'll long term. Yes. Yep. And I feel like yeah. it, it can really mess with both of them. So I'm really interested I'm hoping in it brings season. those two closer. I hope so too. Because I know Tasty, she was a little jealous of So-So when her and Pusey started to get really close. Mm-hmm. But is So-So then going to, you know, be like off on her own again, you know? I mean, yeah. Pusey was the only one that really Yeah, because like, she, was, she was, then she was also kind of like, I'll say inducted into their group yeah. a little bit. And, I don't know, yeah. I, I can see them that. completely just, like, distancing from her, and then so she's alone again. It's either, it's, really... it's going to be one of two. It's going to be distancing her, or it's going to be really enveloping her and right. making her a solid part of that group. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I need to see more of this, but there was a nice moment with Morello in that last episode when she was talking to Nikki about how she had a very clear moment where she's like, I'm doing this to myself. 
this is all my own fault, and pushing these men away. Oh, yes. We haven't really talked about Morello and her distant prison husband, free Ooh, husband. Oh, She's in prison. <laughs> and, and, and how she basically... Got almost jealous and stalkery again, mm-hmm. only to find out that he just lives with his mom. It's really yeah. kind of the big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but she had a moment of clarity that hopefully will last continue in some fashion. And I hope that... I, I mean, it's weird as the whole situation is, I really like them together, and I hope that this doesn't, like, ruin their marriage. Morello and her husband, yeah, whose I mean, name I can't think of. I'm just going to call him Tony, because I think his name should be something like Tony. It's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good Italian boy. He's a good he's Italian have a good boy. Strong name. <laughs> so. I actually really appreciated that conversation between Nikki and Morello, though. They kind of, before she got the clarity, they went at each other mm-hmm. with all the honesty, if you will. <laughs> so. As they do. It was a very good, very good sense of dialogue there. That brought about that moment of clarity. Anything else or anyone else that you want to see in Season 5? Or any questions or predictions you have for Season 5? I kind of want to see the nun's backstory just so we can get more Aubrey Sin on the show. <coughs> Grand Rapids native. She was in that? Yeah, she's she was the young, young sister. Young, she's yeah. young sister. I've never met her. I don't oh. know. <laughs> so guess, I yeah, just her. because Grand Rapids native Aubrey Sin's in Orange is New Black, we should have her backstory. I think she's only been on two episodes. Mm-hmm. Do you know her personally? Yeah. You want to set up an interview? <laughs> For a podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think she's still living in New York doing pig stuff. Skype works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do Skype here. We do FaceTime with some other panelists. She's totally good. All right. I'll contact, you know, who Nikki Hyde or Emmy Hoger would be able to get a hold of her. Okay. Easy. Lori Valdir. Okay. That whole group. All these name <laughs> droppings that we're doing right now. Hi, all. If you're listening, <laughs> shout out to you. We'd love, we would love to talk to you. I oh am very <laughs> curious for next season how long it will, like, the the events that have, of the end of this season, whether it will be an immediate resolution or if they'll drag it out or, like, do some sort of flash forward and then we'll, like... I hate that. I really I hope really they hope don't do it. Has a to pick up. No, no, no. I hope that. Right. I hope they don't I, I, too. But I'm just. Saying, no, I know they could do it. They could, it could be like a month, and then we just hear about the events. No, no. That, that, that would cheapen the story. Line. Dear, if if anything, the new black they could flash no. forward like halfway through the first episode, like you know, or you know, or the second, they would, you know. Oh, like do, I mean, but, film the aftermath, but then there could be a jump forward. But I don't think it would be in. No, they right need away. to finish the story yeah. strong. Oh, I think so, too. I, I just... We have fears. We, I have fears <laughs> yeah. they're going to jump the shark here. But, I mean... Then, I don't think they... I don't think they can. They set up way too many... To do any sort of flash forward. Yeah, there's, there's just way, way too, too many everybody pillars was there. there. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. I mean, they, they, they literally have to return to that moment. I don't see how they could tell the story mm-hmm. any other way without losing half their viewership, honestly. Yeah. Well, good thing the show takes place in a prison, so it can't be like Weeds, where when the story completely changes, the whole show changes. Because I started to think that that could happen. I was like, no, they're in a prison. They can't change. But, but like, what, what I do hope that someone grabs the gun from Daya, and even if they kill him, I hope it's someone that it's going to affect less. Like Frida? Like Frida. <laughs> or Yoga Jones, apparently. Well, you she's s- probably just manslaughter. <laughs> I, know. I don't think she, yeah, I don't think she premeditated. No. Which is what makes murder. So. Right, so, but Frida definitely has killed She people. premeditated. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, but, but, and Frida could handle Max. She could. She's tough. <laughs> She's a tough old broad. She so, cuts up people. Whatever. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying, I, I hope that this doesn't like derail Daya from ever seeing her kid again. Yeah, that would be tragic. That would be tragic. I'd be really yeah. upset with that storyline, to be honest. I well, keep but rooting for as her. It, as it is right now, we, we, we never found out anything that happened with Cesar or anything, so she might never see her kid ever again anyway. Well, the kids are in the system. Yeah, we know that. We know the kids are in the system, so now, what's Daya's mom's name? Alita. Alita, she's going to now have to hunt it. for them once she finds out if it's her daughter who passed away in prison or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I hope, I predict, I hope that Daya will not actually shoot the guard. But who will do it? 
I don't know. I can see one of the other Dominicans kind of jumping in for her, even though they've been egging her on. Or she'll shoot him and they'll all say something else happened. That's crazy. Happen. He might try to jump her or something. Even if she, she could doesn't do that. shoot him, though, I still feel she's she's yeah. going to get time added onto her sentence. Yeah, because she has a weapon. Yeah. She just picked it up. Yeah. She yeah. could shoot him in the kneecap and not actually kill him. That'd be all right. Or, I mean... That's not going to be much better. But, I mean, but not for know. her, but at least, you well, know, he wouldn't die. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. but, you know... And it would be a painful they, thing to recover from. It, she might do it, and then they all agree to change their story, and then... And they already have a riot on their hands. That's true. There's a lot the prison is going to have to account for that they've tried to. Because it's been less than a year since they've all broken out to the lake. It's like, been less than a month if we do the calculation, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's why I feel like it's even been a year. No, no. no. Just, no. Just, just, just a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Dai's pregnancy makes us realize it's been about a year. Yeah, well, that's true. So I don't know. I don't think I don't think she will. But I you're right. She might in. still. She might still suffer the wrath of holding a weapon. He's How did horrible. she get that weapon? She stole I mean, it from no, him? Not, it like, fell out. He, I think he went to get it, yeah, and, and it somebody bumped off. into him because everyone's rushing, and it falls, and everyone stops. And yeah. She picks it up. And she picks it up. Okay. And then orange. That went happen. Orange out. Orange out. That, went, that just went too fast. Mm-hmm. I remember this, you know, her holding the gun. I don't remember how she actually got it, so. Yeah, because he's not even supposed to bring it in. It's a, isn't it like an all-plastic no, Go they on. let him walk. They let he, him he asked her. He threatened the guards. Because they found it when they oh, did the metal detecting, okay. and he said he needs it to protect himself or mm-hmm. something. Or That's whatever. right. They said, Ankle holes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it will be interesting to see what they do, because it is the guards' fault that it made it in in the first place. So yeah. there is a lot they have to answer for and or cover up, and so they may just deny the And as you know, the old guards, you did see them mm-hmm. around town. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back. Would you be awesome? And maybe Maybe Caputo gets fired. Caputo's definitely in trouble. I think he's going to be scapegoated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really do. And his new crazy girlfriend. Which is fine by me. Which might be over since she found his bite marks. Yeah, him and Fig had another night of passion. Didn't need to see that either. (laughs) We'll just pretend it didn't happen. Okay, I'll try to erase my brain. (laughs) Oh, she's horrible. I hated every time they were in a board meeting, Mm -hmm. both seasons. Con Con or whatever it was. Yeah, that's so I mean, I'm sure they probably exist. That's what's really sad. (laughs) Until we saw Mike Berbiglia, then I was happy. I love Mike Berbiglia. I don't have any reaction to that. He's a funny man. About <laughs> Me neither. Here, here. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about season four and what happened, or what you want to see, or hope to see, or predict to see in season five? I predict that Judy King will get out of jail. I keep thinking uh, she's like a shot. That's shot-er. a softball. <laughs> I feel like she might accidentally get shot in this. Mm, Whoa. Situation. Well, because she's not supposed to be there, so if uh-huh. something happened that to her. That would be the, yeah. the worst for the prison. I think. The only thing I can think of is if they don't shoot her, then she's there to help. Yeah, she can tell take the inmate side when things go south. That's what I would want. What if to she's the one who takes the gun from Dia and shoots the mad guard? That'd be cool. I don't no, know. but I think that would she's kind of brassy. She's having three ways. But I mean, it's it's <laughs> Amanda what? makes a point like she has enough she's media pull <laughs> that <laughs> if. Yeah. She has enough clout that she can actually <laughs> change the narrative. Since yeah. with, the, with Larry leaving at the end of whatever season, the whole reporter aspect trying to yeah. figure out what's going, in on, going on inside has completely stopped. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so even, doesn't matter really if anyone shoots her and they change the story, she has the ability to make that. She's shown how powerful she is because she makes messed up things happen. So mm-hmm. she makes a, not you know the three way is the joke, but there were much worse things. Oh yeah, I mean so and her backstory is not flattering to her either. No. Nina Sharp is also racist. Oh my gosh, the, <laughs> but she is racist, but she seems to be like capable of change. The she her is. interactions as opposed to some of the. Other racist characters? She's capable of it, but as Amanda said, she loves where she is too much that I don't feel well, like... Well, I think the test would have been what she would have done with what she promised Poussey, but we won't. We can't find that out. But she said to her that she promised her a job. Whether or not she would have followed through, 
I don't know. I wouldn't be if she doesn't get shot. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw her grab that gun somehow. I can see her doing it. Okay, because she had a threesome. Not <laughs> that right. That was the joke, Andrew. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> she have other, she has other things. She's quite salty. Can I just say I want the cast to come over to my house and serenade me because of all the ridiculous voices in this show who don't sing. A musical episode. That's no, what that we need. Oh no! <laughs> Probably. They already but, I mean, did their own to Pinot Noir. With some vocal gymnast in the called cast. Pickle Jar. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, they did do the Christmas. Yeah, but none of the singers sang. No. Like where was Leah Delaria? Was it? And yeah. Kimoko and Uzo and. Yes. Yeah. Stephanie J. Block is in the season, fairly. She was a guard. She's the one that wanted makeup tips, right? Yeah. Just random. But I was just, I mean, like, every time I watch it, I was like, there are so many ridiculous <laughs> singers in this show that, yeah. So you're wishing for a musical episode? No, I'm wishing for them to all come over to my house and serenade me. Well, that's a not part of the plot. Be bad. It's not really going to happen. Anything <laughs> else related to the plot <laughs> of Orange is the New Black season four or what you'd like to see in season five? What if the prison gets shut down and the inmates have to split up? That's what I said. Why did you say that? I said uh, when I said I thought this could season five could be the last oh, season yeah. because I don't see Litchfield sur- existing oh. after this. Yeah, I could see that being <laughs> a finale where everybody gets split up and there's no way to mm-hmm. keep in touch. It would just be like a little like epilogue, like. But it can't be at the end of season but, five. No. We know they've renewed, so. Yeah, so I but like the very end could be. Well, season five could only be two weeks long. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying the ultimate end. Could, could be, be Litchfield. Being shut down. How many more giant mistakes can, can happen? They make? Can one prison make? You wonder that. <laughs> but then there's a Since little. Since all sh- the other real prisons are run so smoothly. But then. <laughs> 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 but you see, there's a little show called Grey's Anatomy that's uh, been on uh, for an, uh, just an obscene amount of time. Twelve seasons. And you know how many characters have died or major disasters have happened at that hospital and it's still running? That's why I stopped watching Desperate Housewives. How many disasters can happen to one neighborhood? This is what I'm saying. So the Speaking of, key the advice. They canceled a while ago and Grey's is still on. And yeah. they started like the same night. They did. Was they started there? at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope they are smarter than that. I mean, I you can still so. see Dexter. Are. How many serial killers are in Miami? That's why I stopped watching that show. Say the same time. That's for a Dexter podcast. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was yeah. Oh, really? Those <laughs> <laughs> old ladies seen yeah. a lot of shit. I, I hope that I know, they, they have so an end game. They get <laughs> and I, I, just, I hope they follow through with it. I hope they don't keep making it a cash cow until the story just fizzles and then they just let it unceremoniously die. I really hope they have a story and they'll stick to it. And Maybe seven will be the last. Do you think they know? Where I, they're going? I do you hope think they do? Do you That's think possible. like in season two they knew Pusey was going to die at the end of no. season four? No. no, I don't. I don't think. But I think now they've kind of reached their peak. I hope they have Some at least the plan. general story, the major arc. I outlined. think when they're given a set number of seasons, they plan for that. You know, so I don't think they were given double season renewals at the time of season two, Mm-mm. but they were given a double season renewal to get them through this season. So I think they planned this arc because you can feel the continuity between three and four yeah. better almost than you could between two and three. Yeah, a lot two, better. Two stands alone. Like there's agreed. I don't even remember season two. V. v. <laughs> <laughs> That's that season. Rosa. You can't really sum up a I just season like, me, like though. I, I think that was my least favorite like season. Rosa. Rosa ran her over the bus. Right, yeah. I liked season that two. That was season two. Maybe yeah. season three, I don't remember. I don't, it, it, was a, it was a comedy, basically. <laughs> it was weird, freakish, yeah, panty sniffing. Okay. Panty sniffing. Right, that I was remember that thing. part of it. <laughs> Anything uh, else? Are you going to keep watching season five? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah yes. and I'm going to start watching it the day it comes out now. Just I'm stop watching Good Morning America. Well, now I don't have cable at my house, so now so I there don't you have go. That solves a lot of problems. But it was, but I wasn't, <laughs> but I, no, I was watching the ABC News app, and that's when it popped up, so I was not well, don't watch ABC. that. I won't app. watch just, any news app when just, it comes out. Just turn Turn off your phone. Don't use the internet. Yeah, that's not. I didn't have a problem. Does anyone ever watch the People's Couch? Because it's hilarious. But that's what happens when I have to when they talk about a show. It's like this. Well, no, it's not. 
There's, it's basically an oh, entire show okay. where no, it's like no, a family no. or friends or you know whatever. They have different like groups of people and they all like know each other. And it's basically them sitting down and watching the show and then just like giving live commentary while they're watching it. And it's, it's like hilarious. Science theater. But no, when they talk about shows that I watch, you know, it's like oh, I haven't seen this week's episode because it's like every Thursday. So they talk about what was like big on TV that week. It's like, and then I was like, well, now I can't watch this episode of The People's Couch. <laughs> because they're going to talk about Orange is New Black or something. And okay, yeah. you brought it hilarious. back around. You should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they'll endorse us now that we've endorsed them. <laughs> Would you still recommend Orange is the New Black? Yeah, I'd yeah. say just start at season four. No. No, you have to start at season one. For the show, you can't jump in midway. I'd recommend it with every show, but yes, I, yeah. People that watch it, absolutely continue to watch it. Watch this season. If you haven't watched season four yet because you didn't like season three, watch it. Well, don't listen to this podcast until you watch, watch season, season four. four. It's good to tell uh, them that at the end. <laughs> 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 Kylie did say major spoilers at the beginning. She warned them. I, would, I, I don't know if I would like recommend people to start it just because... I'm so on the fence right now with it. What? I don't know. I, re- I thought you were addicted, it. but sort of salsa wish. I am. Like, so I have already it's been a watching casual it. casual addiction. Yeah. yeah. Is that I'm a thing? Season three, <laughs> season three was rough. The beginning of this season was rough. I'm very concerned that it's going to jump over the, the shark here soon. I just don't never... I don't feel any jump ...recommend the, the show to... Like, I feel like with the show, I would know... Who to recommend it to? Yeah, like, that's what I, you have to recommend it to very yeah. specific people. It's not a show for my mom and dad. Oh yeah, no! So. Well, it's <laughs> the thing that I hear is like, do you know how many like gay guys were like, oh, I can't watch that show. There's too many boobs. It's like, what? like I have so many guys that, that don't like boobs. boobs. <laughs> have said they stop the watching. The straight guy has no the Gentlemen, watch the show. Just watch the show. Ignore the boobs. It'll be fine. I think the story is more compelling. There's more sexy sex and boobs in the first season. And a Nina Sharp three way. So (laughs) I have to see a bunch of shows with stuff I don't want to see from... I don't need to see gratuitous anything, but that's not the point of the show. Like, it's more than boobs. Yeah. Like pass the boobs and enjoy the content. People. You've gotten Amanda on her danders. <laughs> Fired up! Fired up! But it's a weird thing, though. Oh like, I've God. heard that at least five times. Tell him to build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> well, it's, it's true. It's a very good show with a very good story that actually has far-reaching implications beyond boobs. So it isn't just about boobs. And it provides current social commentary. <laughs> Which is really what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and amazing acting performances. Yeah. And writing and episode direction. With Kate Mulgrew, as uh. Nick would say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. If you're a Trekkie, you get to see Captain Janeway. What are you going to do? If you're a Trekkie, you could just pretend she's on the holodeck. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really, really bad program. Who wrote that? <laughs> You know how many World War II programs they get stuck into? Why are they reliving the war? That's so true. You're right. As entertainment. I, comment rescinded. <laughs> and on that note, I think we should stop here. <laughs> so at this time, I would like to thank Andrew, Amanda, Kristen, Kristen, and Nick for joining me once again to talk about Orange is the New Black, specifically Season 4. The next time you hear this panel will, of course, be after Season 5 is released to Netflix, so probably around this time next year. Let's just be realistic. Until that time, though, we have several more new episodes coming down the pike, and we're available in so many formats and outlets. YouTube, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, we're everywhere find us we have a live podcast coming up on october 22nd a couple of the people in this room will actually be on that panel and we'll be available via a live stream feed from our facebook page so find us there of course we're always at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com and we have several more new episodes coming down the pike of the standard variety as well so make sure that you subscribe follow and like to stay abreast of brand new episodes until that time keep listening Keep watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.